thank you everybody for coming out. It's great to see all of you. This is actually way more people than I expected to come to this today. Uh, but thank you. Uh, I was not going to record, but we are recording this, so it will go out later as well. So this microphone is not for projection, just for recording. Uh, David would like to take a couple of minutes and talk about the 25th Street overlay that's going to be happening on the 100 and 200 block coming up pretty soon. And so we'll turn the time over to David. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Thomas. Um, so some of you may have seen the email that went out from ODA last week, and it has all the details. Plus, there's more flyers back here by the sign-in table. But it has all the details regarding the, uh, uh, the street overlay next, next week. And so it starts on Tuesday, goes through Friday. Uh, so there'll be a couple days of milling and cleaning, and then two days of actual putting new pavement down. Uh, it will dramatically improve the 100 and 200 block of 25th Street, and so, but it will be a hassle, but it will be really cool when it's done, right? So um, just take a look at the, the details on the flyer when you, when you leave, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Our, our public service operations department phone number's on there, too, if you have any questions. Um, also, the manhole covers, they're raising and lowering those accordingly. Uh, to match up with the pavement on uh, Sunday and Monday nights, I believe. So the details are in the flyer, so just wanted to give you, you guys that are on 25th Street a heads up uh, so you can make arrangements uh, for your parking and, and other, other uh, driving uh, uh, needs. So also, um, some of you probably noticed that up at the Temple, a couple blocks up, there's a lot of uh, r uh, construction going on in the parking lot as a result. Uh, you may see uh, temple patrons parking in the junction area and other places, which can be a good thing too in terms of pedestrians walking by your businesses and so forth that are in that area. Uh, but just uh, we just ask for your patience as they park in the, the public open areas at the junction garages and other areas. So uh, just a heads up on that as well. All right. Any, if you, any of you have any questions, uh, catch me afterwards and we can talk some more about that. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have you go first. Um, Karen is going to be talking to us about the Sunflower Project um, and how you can implement that in your businesses downtown. So, Thomas, you are way off on numbers, but this is so good. Oh, I know. Um, so most of you know that uh, Visit Ogden joined the Hidden Disability Sunflower Program about a year ago, and we've been slowly implementing and training a lot of our front-facing community partner staff over the last nine months, and we've thankfully trained hundreds, which has been great. Um, I'm excited to share that the Ogden Weaver Chamber has officially joined the program as well. Um, Ogden City School District is joining as well, and Ogden City. And so you're going to see the sunflower around Ogden. And what it represents is someone with a hidden disability. Um, Nicole, this is Nicole Van Vieskirk. She has been so integral mm -hmm. and helpful in what we've been doing because she is blessed to have a neurodiverse son. And so she's been giving us a great insight into how we can implement that better in our community. What we're also working on at Visit Ogden is accessible itineraries for those not only that are visiting, but that will embrace and help those within our community to understand and to be able to know where a safe place to go. So Nicole and I are actually going to hit the pavement and just make sure our businesses in the area know what the sunflower is. We also want to create a list of businesses, especially for the neurodiverse community where they can feel safe, where it's not loud, it's not noisy. Um, and they can go and just feel comfortable. Just feel comfortable. I can tell you, I moved to Ogden two years ago with my son. Um, he's nonverbal, but he looks like everybody else does everything else. He skis up a snow basin. Um, sometimes, though, when we go into restaurants, he kind of just acts up a little more than a regular kiddo might. Um, so we end up tending to go the same places every time, the people who know him and the people who understand what happens when we walk through the door. So a simple awareness program would be very helpful and help us actually get to go 
to more businesses throughout Ogden. As you can see, she's been so helpful. And Linda from the Ogden Diversity Commission, she too has a son who is on the spectrum. And she has another perspective as well. So that's been very helpful for us. But we will be working with Ogden Valley Adaptive, Trails Foundation, Northern Utah, anybody that has insight into accessibility, we would love your input and feedback as we move forward in building out these itineraries. They're gonna live on our website, so they'll be accessible to the public and for our visitors. Prior to, uh, what we're finding too is a lot of individuals that have a disability of any kind, they tend to do a lot of research prior to their visit. Um, and once they feel comfortable, they'll come, they'll stay longer, and they're loyal. And so, but we also know that when we're embracing our visitor community, we're also bettering our own personal community and those who actually work and live here. And so, if you've got questions or suggestions, I'm, I'll be here afterward. But um, as we're out and about, and we'll have these available through either the chamber, the city, the district. Another fact that Luke told me a couple weeks ago with Ogden City School District is 17% of the student body there has some type of disability, which is the highest in the state of Utah. So he's excited to implement this program as well into Ogden City School District. So thanks. Thank you, Karen. Um, so I didn't actually introduce myself. My name's Thomas Kiernan. Um, I do see several people here that I already know. Um, but I'm the new executive director here at the Ogden Downtown Alliance, and so uh, I do want to give you a few updates with that being one of them. So uh, you'll notice that uh, that's a big change for us, um, but I want to reassure everybody that the focus of the Downtown Alliance remains the same. We've already been planning and are underway uh, several large events you may be familiar with. The historic 25th Street Car Show is coming up on June 2nd. Um, last year we had about 22,000 people attend that event um, and so we're expecting pretty close to the same this year. Uh, we have 330 vehicle spaces open for registration. We're already um, 90 away from full and we haven't even really announced that being open. Um, and then we have Farmer's Market Ogden, which will be beginning May 27th. That runs through September 9th. And um, we've already gone through the selection process for vendors. Uh, we have, uh, I want to say, close to 220 vendors right now. That is underway to begin on May 27th. I actually just got some paperwork for our ramp funding, um, some exciting things that will be um, kind of improved upon for those events this year is um, a, a real heavy investment in the entertainment and live music um, at those events so that we can hopefully get the people that are already coming to attend those events to stay longer and then visit um, not only the vendors of the farmer's market but to come to your front doorsteps um, and then you can hopefully pull them in and make some sales um, while those events happen. Um, I feel like there was something else I needed to say about Farmer's Market. Um, oh, we also have Music on the Plaza that is coming up, and that is Wednesdays beginning June 7th, um, and that will run for six weeks uh, where it traditionally has in the Junction Plaza. And then it will go for an additional three weeks at the Dumb Key Plaza over in the Nine Rails. Um, and so we'd really like to see everybody come out to that. Um, that's a great way for us to support our local musicians um, and give additional opportunities for them to perform. Um, hopefully, like Sonora, um, it gets some people to hang out and, and purchase some food. Um, but it's just a way to add a little bit of extra uh, vibrancy downtown um, and then um, other updates like I said um, I just I, I want to highlight our team that's been in place for a couple of years now specifically Haley Van Patten um, Cameron Egan Allison Lambert Jessica Marine and then Cher is not here uh, today but all of them uh, you know that's really where the work comes from 
um, to make these events happen, to make the communications downtown happen. And uh, we just, as an organization, we want to be supportive of local business, local commerce, and local arts. And um, we're still committed to doing all of those things. Uh, with that said, I'm sure there are some questions, and so I would like to open it up to anybody, and hopefully I can attempt to answer some of those that you may have, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. A coloring book? Uh, so this is a shameless plug. We actually... Uh, did a coloring book for the car show. You'll notice some of the artwork on the walls. Uh, in 2021, we commissioned an artist who's actually in the Monarch. Um, his name is Gene, and he painted that with the iconic uh, neon dragon. And then we partnered with uh, Ogden Eccles Community Arts Center um, and did a plein air competition that year so behind Sarah over there the yellow car that was the winning artwork from 2021 and then next to it behind there uh, that artwork was the winning artwork from last year so we've incorporated art into the car show and uh, with that um, we actually printed like 500 uh, coloring sheets of that in black and white in 2021 and they disappeared in like 10 minutes and uh, people of all ages had crayons and were coloring. And so uh, last year we did a full coloring book. We had Leon, um, some of you, yeah. And uh, he did the full coloring book. This year we have Abby from Paint Kits to go. I don't actually know Abby's last name off the top of my fingers. Um, so with that said, uh, to fund that book, we actually sold some ad space. And so if you, uh, are interested in helping support the coloring book and get that in there. There will be 2,000 copies printed. Uh, those will go during the car show, um, and we would love your support for that. So thank you for the reminder, Jessica. Wherever she went. <laughs> Any other questions? Like, I'm here, I'm here, available, grill me. <laughs> Instagram takeover dates, you'll want to connect with Cameron on those. Uh, she'll have all the information, she's just right over here. Um, and I will have her make sure she connects with you after this. I'm Cameron. I've been running um, the social media for ODA for almost two years now. Um, so an Instagram takeover is basically when your business has access to our social media and all of our followers. This makes it so that you can connect the two and that people will follow you. So today we actually have an Instagram takeover going on from the new plant shop that's on Washington Boulevard. She's super amazing and the shop is really cool if you guys haven't gotten an opportunity to see it yet. But if you guys want to email me or come up to me after this, I will explain everything. We have guidelines, so it's a really good opportunity to get your businesses shown in Ogden. So sweet, that's all I have. <laughs> Thanks, Cameron. Uh, yeah, that's mutually beneficial for us as well. So we love to see it. Uh, it puts content on our own page and uh, helps promote downtown. So if you're interested, it helps. Cameron not have to continually try to come up with and post stuff. It kind of fills some of those calendar dates. So we would love for you to do that. That's available for any of the businesses downtown or organizations. Um, we'd really like that, actually. So thank you. Great question. Yes. So uh, this year we would love as much volunteer support as possible. That information is, will be on our social media in the uh, link area. Um, I believe some of it is housed on our website, um, but we also have a page on Give Pulse, which if you go through LinkedIn, guys, correct me if I'm wrong here. If you go through Instagram and follow the link, you can sign up there. 
directly to join um, our Give Pulse page, and then you'll see opportunities for volunteering, or before events, we'll also be sharing, uh, requesting for volunteers. But uh, we, you know, we have these massive community events. We have a staff of six of us, and so volunteer help is greatly appreciated and also kind of necessary for us. So. All right, well, um, feel free to hang out for a little bit. Um, if you do have specific questions, you want to meet with me, um, I've got time available until a meeting at 11, so uh, I'll be here. Um, but I, I'd be happy to meet with anybody individually in the next few weeks. Uh, I'd love to kind of share the vision and the goal. Like I said, not much is actually changing. We're still committed to the mission of economic vitality, community vibrancy. We're going to do that through large-scale community events, live music, arts. Uh, so all of that stuff is really staying the same. Um, if you have specific suggestion, I'm all ears. Um, but thank you for coming today. Really appreciate it. And uh, feel free to hang out. Definitely get some coffee and cinnamon rolls. And uh, we'll be here for a little bit. Take as much time as you'd like. Thank you. <laughs>